Um, this is our last talk before halftime. We're gonna take a short break after this talk. Our, our last speaker for this half is an astronomy a PhD student at the University of Michigan. Please welcome Gillen Brown. This is what the night sky looks like in a city like Ann Arbor. The stars are beautiful and we can typically see a few hundred, but what you may not know is we're missing out on more than 4,000 stars that are hidden to us because of light pollution. There's an incredible show that we're just not seeing here in Ann Arbor. This is what we're missing out on. The, this band here is the Milky Way galaxy, our home galaxy that we're actually seeing from the inside out. But you can't see that anything close to like that here. Imagine seeing this from your backyard, camping with your kids, for example. I want to see this again. In the next four and a half minutes, I'm gonna talk about how we can get that back. So we're probably familiar with the idea that light pollution causes us to lose the night sky, but I wanna walk through exactly how this happens. So we want to light up our cities, the streets, for example, but what can be a problem is if we have light coming upward. Well, when this happens, some light goes into space, which is totally harmless, but some will bounce off molecules in the air and come back down to Earth. This makes the sky look lit up. And when this happens, it washes out the stars. So when we're trying to see something dim, like a star, the light from the sky glow, which is what we refer to the light pollution as, is so much stronger than the light from the star, we can't see it. It's like trying to hear someone whisper to you in a loud concert. Um, the light from the sky totally overwhelms the stars, and that ruins our view of the night sky. So um, I want to fix this. There are a bunch of ways we can do this. Um, the first one, obviously, is to cut out lights, turn them off. There's no lights, there's no light pollution. And this can make a huge difference. Um, this is how the night sky changed in Toronto when there was a huge blackout through the whole Northeast. So before, you can't see anything, but after, the Milky Way is visible again. And so we don't want massive blackouts every night, but turning off lights makes a difference. Uh, the color of light bulbs also matters. Some are redder or bluer than others. It turns out the red ones are what we want. Um, you may see them referred to as warm white light bulbs, or there's this technical measurement called color temperature that you want to be below 3,000. But just remembering that redder is better is key. Um, another thing is cutting out light that goes up. If we reduce the amount of light that goes upward, we reduce the light that bounces off the air and comes back down to us. And so we really do this just by having light fixtures that stop the light from going up. It's that simple. So this is kind of some examples of good and bad light fixtures. Um, you can see the good ones are made in a way that stops the light from going up. We call this fully shielded. While the bad light fixtures allow light to go up, even if it's at a slight angle, that still contributes. So the whole key is stop light from going up. So whenever you're looking at a light fixture to add to the outside of your house, maybe consider this. Uh, these don't have to be more expensive or anything. It's just awareness, knowing that this is something you should look for when you're thinking about light fixtures. Um, so here in Ann Arbor, these are the tennis courts along Washington near the medical campus. And these uh, lights I've labeled with red arrows are the typical globe pedestrian lights that you see all around Ann Arbor. Um, but they're not the ones lighting up the tennis courts. Um, th those are the higher lights that are shown here with the green arrows. And these are great. These are fully shielded. The light is only going onto the tennis courts, nowhere else, not up, just on the tennis courts. While these pedestrian globe lights that are s unfortunately so common in Ann Arbor are a huge contributor to light pollution because all the light goes up. Um, the, the pedestrian globe lights are nice, but you can also have plenty of uh, dark sky friendly lighting that looks fine too. So you don't have to sacrifice aesthetics or anything to protect the night sky. So to kind of summarize, here are the takeaways that you can do to help preserve our night sky. So first of all, turn off lights, outdoor lights if you can. Um, maybe use a timer or a motion sensor or something like that. Use redder light bulbs and then use fixtures that stop light from going up. So you can do this on your personal property, which is great. You can also make a difference in the larger community. I'm part of a group that is interested in doing that. And so if you want to join or just want more information, come talk to me in the intermission or afterwards. I'll be happy to share some information about that. But to close up, I wanted to talk about light pollution in Michigan. So this is our state with a map color-coded by how bad the light pollution is. Um, white is the worst, while the blues, greens, and grays are the best. So the UP is fantastic for stargazing, but it gets worse the farther you go south, unfortunately, for us. Um, there's a few areas in Michigan that have taken action, implemented these things I've talked about to become dark sky preserves, and these are great areas for stargazing. But what would be better is if the whole state was like this. We don't want to have to go to a dark sky preserve to see the night sky. We should be able to see it, something like this, from Ann Arbor. And that's what I want to take away from this. I want that, and I believe a lot of you probably want that too. So. Imagine going out to the night sky. Next time you go outside when it's dark, take a look up. 
Imagine seeing 10 times as many stars as there are now. Seeing the Milky Way like this from Ann Arbor. If that's something you want, take action. Do something. We can make a difference in this, and we can reclaim the night sky. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a brief intermission, but before we do, I just want to take a moment to thank the Washtenaw Toastmasters, who uh, were very generous in providing some uh, guidance to our speakers in our run-through sessions. We really appreciate their help. If you'd like to talk to them, Toastmasters is a um, association that uh, helps people develop their public speaking skills. Some of the representatives have a booth just back there, if you'd like to talk to them during halftime. Uh, we'll get started again around 8.05. Uh, so stretch your legs. There's uh, restrooms are between us and the Friends bookshelf. Uh, bookshop. Thanks.